Now we will discuss about the moving coil ballistic galvanometer. The working principle of moving coil galvanometer is when a current is passed through a coil which is suspended freely in a magnetic field, it experiences a force in a direction given by Fleming's left hand rule. So a coil is suspended freely in, a, in between a magnetic field. It will experience a force and its direction can be find out by Fleming's left hand rule. This is a, this is the working principle of ballistic galvanometer. Uh, the abbreviation is BG. Ballistic galvanometer. <coughs> so what is Fleming's left hand rule? If we keep our three fingers, forefinger, middle finger and thumb of our left hand in three mutually perpendicular direction. The forefinger will represent the direction of the magnetic field uh, and the middle finger will represent the direction of the current. Then the thumb will be the direction of the force experienced. Okay, this is the Fleming's left hand rule. According to this rule, the force, magnetic force experienced by the coil uh, by the coil in a uniform magnetic field can be found out. This is the working principle. <clears throat> now, how, how can this be constructed? <clears throat> it consists of a rectangular coil of thin copper wire wound on a metallic frame of ivory. It is suspended by means of a phosphor bronze wire between the poles of a powerful horseshoe magnet. A small circular mirror is attached along the suspension wire. The lower end of the spring, lower end of the wire is connected to a higher spring and its one end is connected to this terminal T2 and this end is connected to terminal T1. This is the uh, construction. This is the arrangement of this bridge. <coughs> now, a cylindrical soft iron core C is placed symmetrically inside the coil between the magnetic poles which are also made cylindrical in shape. This iron core concentrates the magnetic field and helps in producing radial field. Here you can see C. This is a cylindrical soft iron core which is placed inside the coil and the magnetic field also made radial so this iron core will concentrate the magnetic field uh, so it will it will give a powerful radial magnetic field so what is the purpose of this bg the bg is used to measure electric charge the charge has to pass through the coil as quickly as possible and before the coil starts moving the coil thus gets an impulse and a throw is registered to achieve this result a coil of high moment of inertia is used so that the period of oscillation of the coil is fairly large the oscillations of the coil are practically undamped so it's usually used for measuring charges <coughs> charges flowing through this Mm, through a circuit so how it is work uh, usually the suspension wire used will be of high moment of inertia so that the oscillations produced will be of large period mm, so we can uh, the uh, oscillations produced the throw produced in the coil will be proportional to the charge flowing through the coil so the, by that by this proportionality we can measure the charge flowing through the bg this is the uh, principle and, and and the purpose of BG ballistic galvanometer now we can see the see in detail the theory of how it works so consider a rectangular coil placed in a uniform magnetic field of magnetic induction B let L be the length of the coil B and B its breadth this is L L L this is its length and B is its breadth. This is the case as we consider uh, in the previous section. <coughs> now the area of the loop can be written as L is the length and B is the breadth. So area will be L into B. When a current I passes through the coil, the torque acting on the coil torque can be written as N I into B A. Uh, we have already discussed how this come uh, in the previous section. So torque is torque is equal to n i into b into a 
if the current passes for a short interval dt the angular impulse produced in the coil is tau into dt if uh, the current passing through the coil is for a very short time then the angular impulse can be written as torque into this time interval so this is niba into dt <coughs> if the passes uh, if the current passes for t seconds the total angular impulse can be uh, find out by integrating this uh, integrating this value from 0 to t if t is the total time this is for a small interval dt so the total angular impulse can be written uh, find out find out by integrating this from integral 0 to t so if we are integrating this we will get n b and a are constant where n is the number of turns of the coil b is the magnetic field and is the area area of the loop so these are constants we can take outside of this integral so this will become integral 0 to t i integral 0 to t i dt means this is the charge total charge flowing through this so we can write n b a into q here i integral i dt is the q is the total charge passing through the galvanometer coil let i be the moment of inertia of the coil about the axis of suspension and omega its angular velocity if this coil is suspended freely uh, freely so um, when the charge flows it can twist so the moment of inertia experienced by the coil is b let it be i and the angular frequency is omega <coughs> then the change in angular momentum of the coil can be i into omega i is the moment of inertia omega is the angular frequency so these two can be equated <coughs> n into uh, b into a q so i omega is, is is equivalent to the total angular impulse the change in angular momentum is equal to the total change in total angular impulse experienced by the coil so i omega is equal to n b a into q now the kinetic energy of the uh, moving system can be written as i omega in half i omega square this is for and uh, this is for a system experiencing rotational motion i is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular frequency so here the coil twist so it's like a rotational motion so it's the so the kinetic energy can be represented as half i omega square so this energy is used in twisting the suspension wire through an angle theta so let's see be the restoring torque restoring torque per unit unit twist of the suspension wire c is the restoring twist per uh, restoring torque per unit twist of the suspension wire then work done in twisting the suspension wire by an angle theta can be written as half c theta square just like half m uh, c square this is the energy <coughs> energy required to twist the coil okay half c theta square now uh, so these two can be equated so this is the kinetic energy this is the kinetic energy which is the energy uh, which is used for twisting the suspension wire through an angle theta and c is the restoring torque which is also uh, which is also used for twisting them mm. this is another representation of this force uh, for twisting the coil through an angle theta so these two can be equated so half i omega square can be written as equal to half c theta square from this we will get i omega square is equal to c into theta square now from this equation the period of oscillation of the coil can be written as where c is the uh, restoring torque per unit twist so from this we will get t as 2.2 square root of i by c or t square is equal to 4 pi square into i by c because i is equal to 2 pi by omega now i is equal to i is equal to t square uh, you reverse this equation reverse this equation we will get i is equal to t square c by 4 pi pi square this is the moment of finishing now multiply 6 and 7 
multiply by 6 and so so left side will become i square omega square right side will become c square t square theta square by 4 pi square so if we are taking the square root on both side we will get i omega is equal to c t theta by 2 pi now if we equate equation 5 and 8 this is equation 8 and equation 5 is this i omega is equal to n b a q so left side is same for both 5 and 8 so we can get these two equations so we will get n b a q is equal to c t theta by 2 pi <coughs> or q is equal to t by 2 pi into c by n b a into theta this gives the relation between charge flowing and the ballistic throw theta of the galvanometer <coughs> ballistic throw of the galvanometer theta is the throw produced in the ballistic galvanometer when a charge flowing through this galvanometer mm, so you have seen uh, in the construction a mirror is attached to this uh, suspension wire when a charge is flowing through this uh, coil this coil twist uh, um, this coil twist means uh, a charge is flowing uh, um, charge is flowing through this coil the twist is proportional to or this charge uh, this throw is proportional to the charge flowing through this coil and this throw is represented usually as by the letter theta and it is known as ballistic throw which is proportional to the charge flowing through the coil so from this equation hmm, we can uh, these terms are constant t to 2 pi c by and we are constant so we can write q proportional to theta or q is equal to k theta where k is t by 2 pi c by nba <coughs> this is how we get q proportional to theta that is the throw ballistic throw is proportional to the charge <coughs> this is the principle of ballistic galvanometer that is whenever a charge is passing through this gal ballistic galvanometer a throw is produced in the galvanometer and this throw is proportional to the charge flowing through the coil through through the coil so by measuring this throw we can uh, we can know the charge flowing through the coil this is how ballistic galvanometer works okay <coughs> now we can find out the correction factor for damping in ballistic galvanometer correction factor we have assumed that the whole of the kinetic energy imparted to the coil is used in twisting the suspension suspension of the coil in actual practice the motion of the coil is damped by air resistance and the induced current produced in the and the induced current produced in the coil the first throw of the galvanometer is therefore smaller than it would have been in the absence of damping the correct value of the first throw is however obtained by applying damping correction so what is known as damping correction so damping correction means um, in our previous section uh, we have <coughs> uh, assumed that the kinetic energy the complete kinetic energy is used to uh, use to twist the coil so actually uh, there can be uh, air resistance in the uh, setup so uh, a resistive force can be acted on this uh, oscillation so this can cause damping of the oscillation so this can produce an induced current so uh, in, in the uh, so the uh, throw first throw we are obtaining is actually less than what it would be in the absence of damping so this correction need to be applied in this galvanometer after applying this we will get the correct value of the first throw including considering the damping effect in this so this is known as damping correction now here i have uh, drawn a figure this is the main position and this is theta theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 theta 5 okay let theta 1 theta 2 theta b theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta b be the c successive maximum deflections per from zero position to the right and left side that is that is uh, the <coughs> as the coil oscillates to it 
it will move and then come to theta 2 then due to oh, the damping the amplitude of oscillation will decrease so the next coming position will be theta 3 and then it will coming back it won't reach theta 2 because uh, because of the damping it will reach theta 4 then it will come back to theta 5 won't reach theta 3 because of damping so this will be the maximum positions of amplitude theta 1 to theta 3 then theta 3 theta 4 theta 5 etc this will continues like this so i have drawn this um, maximum uh, deflection positions okay now then it is found that theta 1 by theta 2 is equal to theta 2 by theta 3 is equal to theta 3 by theta 4 etc is equal to d the constant d is called a decrement for decrement per half vibration what it is theta 1 by theta 2 here theta 1 is the throw to this position theta 1 by theta 2 so um, a complete oscillation means from 0 to theta 1 then to theta 2 and then back to theta 1 this is this represents a complete oscillation but it won't come back to theta 1 because of damping it will reach only up to theta 3 so the first oscillation is from 0 to theta 1 and then to theta 2 and then to theta 3 so this will represents a complete oscillation so half of this oscillation is from theta 1 0 to theta 1 to theta 2 this is half oscillation the, uh, and the another half of it is it is theta 2 to theta 3 this is the second half so the ratio of theta 1 by theta 2 is equal to theta 3 by theta 4 this is another half and another half is theta 4 by theta 5 etc so we can write theta 1 by theta 2 is equal to this is one the ratio of half oscillation and this is theta 2 by theta 3 is another half oscillation ratio and this is another half oscillation ratio like this it's a roll equivalent to a decrement per half vibration as d okay now let d is equal to e lambda so that lambda is equal to log to the base d so d let d be e raised to lambda so we can write lambda is as log to the base e d <clears throat> here lambda is called the logarithmic decrement so due to damping its oscillation is decreasing and it can be represented as a logarithmic decrement so we we are writing d s e to the power lambda so that lambda is log to the power d <clears throat> for a complete vibration so this is for half vibration so for a complete vibration what will be this equation if we write so so for complete vibration this will reach here uh, this will represents a quarter vibration and coming to theta 2 will be half vibration and coming to theta 3 will complete one oscillation okay so theta 1 by theta 1 by theta 3 will represents um, one complete oscillation so for one complete oscillation the ratio is theta 1 by theta 3 which is equal to <coughs> we can write theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 that is the ratio of two half oscillations uh, or we can represent simply as theta 1 by theta 3 as theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 so cancelling this this will be theta 1 by theta 3 we can write it, it as so but theta 1 by theta 2 and theta 2 by theta 3 are d so we can write here d and here d so d into d is d square so d we have represented as e raised to lambda so d square is e raised to 2 lambda <coughs> let theta be the true first throw in the absence of damping here i have marked a theta here this is theta 1 this is theta this is theta not 0 this is 0 mean position this is theta what is this theta means this theta represents the true first throw in the absence of damping imagine there is no damping so it will be the first throw in the absence of damping uh, this theta will be surely greater than theta 1 that is theta 1 is the first throw in the presence of damping and theta in the absence of damping so theta will be surely greater than theta 1 
the first through theta 1 is observed after the coil complete a quarter of vibration. In this case, the value of the decrement would, would be e raised to lambda by 2. That is, <coughs> this is the uh, first throw uh, before the damping force acting on this. This is the first throw, no damping. And uh, after that, <coughs> the first throw in the coil is theta 1 in the presence. So, this is in the presence of damping. This theta 1 represents a quarter of vibration a quarter of vibration of after damping a quarter of vibration so in this case the value of the decrement would be <coughs> e raised to lambda that is if you are taking the ratio of theta by by theta 1 that is theta represents a quarter of vibration a quarter of vibration that is the first throw in the absence of damping and theta 1 represents another quarter vibration in the presence of damping so if you are taking the ratio of these two we will we can write theta by theta 1 as quarter vibration e raised to lambda by 2 because for half vibration we are writing lambda so for quarter vibration we can write lambda by 2 so this is approximately uh, 1 plus lambda by 2 e raised to lambda by 2 as 1 plus lambda so theta can be written as theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 uh, this approximation is from this uh, series expansion of e raised to x here x is lambda by 2 so we are approximating the term uh, terms to first two terms only so we will get 1 plus lambda by 2 so we will get theta is equal to theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 we can calculate lambda by observing the first throw theta 1 and the 11th row theta 11 so this is the exp uh, expression representing the first throw without first, uh, first throw theta in the absence of damping we can calculate the logarithmic decrement how much decrement is happening to this throw due to damping by observing the first throw and the 11th row Mm, we can increase the interval of this throw uh, so for um, but for a good approximation we are uh, measuring for first and 11th throw for for this theta 1 by theta 11 can be written as theta 1 by theta 2 theta 2 by theta 3 theta 3 by theta 4 etc theta 10 by theta 11 so this is e to the power 10 lambda okay because this is for an interval of 10 throw so this will be e to the power 10 lambda so 10 lambda can be written as log to the base if you are taking logarithm on both sides we can write theta 1 by theta 11 so lambda is equal to 1 by 10 this 10 is coming here 1 by 10 log to the base e theta 1 by theta 11 if you this is natural logarithm natural logarithm if you are taking to the logarithm to the base 10 we can write 2.303 by 10 log to the base 10 theta 1 by theta 11 therefore um, we had the equation um, q proportional to theta or q is equal to k theta um, where k is t by 2 pi into c by nba this was the equation we have got uh, by considering the theory or principle of the ballistic galvanometer well ballistic galvanometer so here we have it considered the damping correct damping factor so if we are considering if you are considering the damping factor we have to apply this correction here so here actually in the place of theta we have to write this expression theta theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 this is the damping correction term so what will be the charge q q is equal to t by c by n b into theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. so instead of uh, instead of theta we have to write, write theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 this is the correction term so a damping factor is applied here so the final equation will be q is equal to t pi 2 pi into c by n b into theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 where lambda is the logarithmic decrement in the throw due to the damping factor okay so this is how the damping correction is applied <coughs> now we can classify this 
galvanometer as two types deadbeat or a periodic which is one type and ballistic galvanometer so what are this galvanometer and what are this difference of this galvanometer both these galvanometers are normal moving coil galvanometer normal moving coil galvanometer <coughs> the difference is that in the deadbeat galvanometer it employs a d current damping as the damping mechanism this making it really it, sorry to reach steady state value faster or it delivers reading quickly and is used for current measurement it does not produce any oscillation instead a steady deflection when a steady current pass through it that's why it is called deadbeat that is Mm, this is uh, the deadbeat galvanometers are used for measuring current the principle uh, is here the damping damping factor is due to uh, eddy current produced in the coil so this its arrangement or its construction is such that an eddy current is developed inside the coil which will be uh, acting opposite to the um, opposite to the motion of this coil so it will be the damping factor here so what will happen is when a um, oscillation is produced it will uh, quickly die out or uh, if it does not produce any acceleration instead a steady deflection that's why deadbeat oscillation so deadbeat galvanometer and what is ballistic galvanometer ballistic galvanometer the uh, the coil has higher moment of inertia this giving it a large oscillation this giving it a large oscillation period so if the coil have a large moment of inertia uh, the oscillation it's produced will be will be of large period and is used in measurement of charge so it can be used for measuring the charge the principle behind is the deflection on the coil is directly proportional to charge passing through it hence the galvanometer measures the majority of the charge passing through it in spite of current so uh, in ballistic galvanometer a large moment of inertia coil is used so that the oscillation produced will be of large period so that it can be um, it does not reach a steady state value uh, instantly so we can use it as uh, an instrument for measuring the charge the throw or the oscillation produced will be proportional to the charge <laughs> this is the difference between a deadbeat and galvanic uh, ballistic galvanometer now the conditions for <coughs> a moving coil galvanometer to be deadbeat what are the conditions the moment of inertia of the system should be small uh, this is for the purpose of producing uh, no oscillations at all so a steady state value is reached so and and second the suspension of fiber should be very fine should be very uh, thin and the third one is air resistance should be small at the uh, here the um, damping factor is due to the eddy current so the air resistance should be small the damping should be small that is the coil should be sorry sorry i switched between these two these two sorry uh, i'll start 